Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this explore, we're going to look at a wiggly line. Okay, let's go take a look at what we need. Here is a wiggly line, and let's just stop that one from wiggling. And when we pick this one up, it wiggles like the other one. But this one at the bottom wiggles like it uh, is real. So it's it's a physics line, Whee, whoop, like so. Whereas this is just wiggling kind of randomly, and even if we're not moving, it wiggles. So that's just a, a random wiggle. And actually to create that random wiggle effect, uh, well, to create this wiggle effect is pretty easy, but to dynamically move around a line and, and change the wiggle is actually pretty tricky. It's, it's not the end of the world, but I find working with physics uh, easier conceptually. You don't have to think of as many things, plus it, it gives us a better effect. So let's see how that is done. Woohoo! So here's uh, an animated line thing. We're using Zim7, CreateJS, and we are also bringing in Box2D and the physics helper that helps uh, with physics in Zim. And we scroll on down. We've got nothing, so we'll view this in a browser. And there she is. There's the nothing. Woot. Okay, so uh, physics, you create a, um, a new physics. So var physics equals a new... Let's see, zim.physics, do we have to do that? I wonder if we can do it without... Uh, let's just try it. physics like so and see if we get an error. Check this out. One of these browsers, there it is. Uh, we refresh here and F12. And there it is saying hi from physics or physics. Please provide a zim frame object. Okay, so that's all right. I was just checking to make sure that uh, the physics does not require the zim namespace. I think the 3JS one, the 3 library might still, but anyway, physics has been adapted to not require the namespace. Okay, so a new physics, and you have to pass in a frame to the physics. We uh, normally have borders around the physics world. We don't really need borders to make this line. In fact, we may not want that. Uh, we may want to move this line so the so it goes off the stage in a sense. Um, part of it, who knows? So we'll we'll pass in none for the borders, and we will give it a gravity of zero. So this is our physics world. So that is the frame, the borders. And normally that would be a default to uh, around your screen, but you can change the borders by passing in uh, a sort of a, an object that represents a rectangle. And borders, and then this last one was gravity, and we won't bother with gravity because we're sort of looking at it from above. Although gravity would be kind of neat to have too, because then you can make a skipping rope type feel if you added gravity to your wiggly line. We will also need to draw the line, so maybe up top we can say bar. We'll make it our line is equal to a new shape. So that's a zim shape and dot add to and I'll add that to the stage. So that's where we'll be drawing in the shape. Now can you see that eventually we're going to have uh, some long code here, but for now we'll make this a bit bigger so you can see it. So the idea will be that we'll have one end anchored and then the other end we're dragging. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a middle dot. We'll put a dot in the middle. And we'll make the forces on that dot in the middle try and head towards both the anchor and the part, the line that we're dragging, or the ball that we're dragging. We'll, we'll just use circles for these things. Uh, and so if we make the forces go towards both ends for that one in the middle, then it, it tries to get in the middle. Okay, that's uh, how we're doing it. Let's 
start off with three circles then in physics. So in physics, we say physics dot make circle. And we can give this one a radius of 10 or something like that. Probably really doesn't matter. This one's going to be fixed. So the next parameter is whether this is dynamic or not. So that is radius and dynamic. And this one we'll store in a variable called about anchor is equal to that. Now normally a body, a physics body, I put the word body after it because we often map zim shapes onto these. Okay, so that's our first one. Oh, we should position that. So anchor body dot x is equal to 300 comma 300 something like that. And then, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm so used to using pose now. <laughs> but in physics, we have to drop back to x and y. So this would be copied here to be the y as well, 300, 300. Great. Now, we won't see that unless we turn on debugging. But maybe I won't even debug. Why don't we just quickly map a zim circle to it? So new well, that variable var anchor is equal to a new circle. And 10 for radius dot add to the stage. Oops. And so how you map the zim circle to the, uh, the physics body is you would say physics dot add map and then it's to the anchor body here and we're mapping on the anchor itself like so so now if we view this oh, oh I think I have the browser open already there should be Uh, there it is. Now that's not terribly exciting because we can't move it or anything like that. It's it's a static shape. So now let's do the same thing. We'll just copy that and make two more. One will be, we'll call it the mid or something like that. This is the middle point that we'll be moving around. So mid and we'll put that one at an X of say 500. It, it will be dynamic, so we can set that to true or the default, the default is true. Great, and that's that one. And then we'll also have, do you wanna call this drag, maybe drag body, drag or the end or whatever, drag will probably be fine. Oops, there's another one. Drag. And actually, there's mid. We'll go there. Okay, so we've anchored mid to the mid body. We've anchored drag to the drag body. And let's move this one over to. Oh, well, call that one 400. And this one 500. Doesn't matter too much. Okay, and open this in the browser. Boop. There they are. Well, I think we can stretch those out a bit more. 500 and 600. Okay, let's take a look. There we go. Oh, <laughs> crap. Almost. 500, 700. We'll also turn on the ability to drag these things. Oh, and that's not false either, because we'll want to be able to move that end dynamic one. And so uh, that is physics.drag. We'll turn all of those on. Now, actually, we don't want to drag the middle one. We want that one just to work on its own. So we can pass in an array of bodies that we do want to drag. Otherwise, it will drag them all, all of the dynamic bodies. So we really just want to drag the drag body. So there we have it. I can't remember if we set that up so that it accepts a, if it's a single thing we're dragging, if we don't need the array. Let's just check that. So we refresh there. Uh, nope, I guess not, because I can drag these and throw them away. Can't drag that. So that didn't work. However, if we put that into an array and refresh, 
I can't drag that one anymore. I can only drag this one and throw it away, which is going to be a problem. So if we're if we're dragging this shape and we kind of let go and it starts to move on us, uh, unfortunately that uh, doesn't work. So we'll have to solve that problem. Now what we want to do is when we move this, we want the force on this middle one to be acting that way and the force to be acting this way. And because we're moving this, this one will then follow along and uh, it, you'll, you'll see that it will also create a wobble in there. We have to do some settings to make that wobble as much as we want. Okay, so there's that stuff so far. Now, we then are going to draw in a, in a ticker. So let's make a ticker. We're going to draw a, a line in inner shape that we have up here. In our shape right here, we're actually going to draw a line using those points. So I suppose we could do that right now if you want. You can say physics dot ticker. You're welcome to also just say ticker dot add. Uh, but uh, the physics does have a ticker, which is a little bit different in that we're updating the physics engine, and this physics dot ticker will update right either after or before, I can't remember which one, but it's sort of tied in. It's the same ticker that we're using to update the physics engine, so we may as well use this one. And we will add a function. And in that function, we can draw our line. So that would be uh, line.graphics. Each time, we'll want to clear the line. That's a, a clear. And then we need to set the styles again on that. I think we do anyway. Uh, S, we will make it a frame dot green. And then dot the stroke, we will make a little bit bigger, like three. Also, if you stroke and leave the sort of square ends on, on the line, it uh, you can see this, the ends sort of move, and I don't quite like that as much, so you're welcome to say round there, and that, that puts roundness on the ends of the line. Uh, good, and now we're going to move to, let me drop that to the next line, move to the starting position, and the starting position was called the anchor, so this will be anchor body dot x and anchor body dot y. How's everybody doing? Anchor body dot x comma. Are you waiting to get to it? We maybe could have set all this stuff up, but it's nice to take you through it, isn't it? Do you, do you like us taking you through it? Hopefully. So that's where we're going to move to. Uh, the next thing we do is we set a quadratic line. Uh, what was that? Curve, I guess. Quadratic curve to a t. I think that might be a t. Quadratic, quadratic curve 2. And these are just short messages for curve 2 or quadratic curve 2. There's also a Bezier curve 2, but we'll just use a quadratic curve 2. And that accepts an anchor point. So our anchor point will just be wherever the midline is. Mid body dot x and mid body dot y. And then uh, where the end line is, so where are we ending? And we're ending at the, the drag body, drag body dot x and drag body dot y. Okay, so at the moment, the, the end will be moving, but the middle part is not moving, so this won't look quite right. And there's our line. And so we're moving this one, and you can see that the control point is here. And so that's making a line from here, a Bezier, a Bezier line in a sense from here to there, a Bezier line from here to there, and then curving, curving that. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Oops, uh, something hit it. Oh yeah, my, my, balls, <laughs> my balls can hit. So uh, that's fine, uh, but we'll... I don't think that's going to cause a problem. You can set in Box2D to make those two things not hit if you wanted to, but I don't 
think that that's going to be a problem because as, as we move this, the forces are going to cause this thing to move in between. And I, I don't believe we'll ever be able to really hit that. At least I haven't seen that happen. Let's increase the thickness of that line a little bit. We'll make that uh, five. So make it blue. See that a bit better. Okay, so for now though, uh, let's apply the forces from uh, from this to this guy right here to to these other two. So we can do that in the ticker as well, and that would be. Uh, let's see. We th so this is a physics, and we're going to apply it to our mid body. So mid body dot apply force. Now watch with box 2D. This is now moving into a box 2D method and unfortunately they start with a capital letter. We're going to apply a force and that force asks for a, a B2 VEC2. So for the first parameter it's a new B, no, B2 VEC2. Now this is a class but for some reason uh, the classes don't start with uppercase, they start with a lowercase. Uh, maybe that's old school or something. Box 2D has been around for a while. Now what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, the force is a, a vector. So we have to say how much in the X we're going to apply a force and how much in the Y we're going to apply a force. So this will be the force that is wants to head towards the one that we're dragging, for instance. Okay, let's do the dragging one first. So that would be drag body dot x minus the mid body where wherever I am dot x. So that would give us an x force that says, oh well the drag body is over there on the right. Make a force that's that big minus wherever the the x is and it'll apply a force that way. Okay, now uh, this will be too big, so let's just reduce it a little bit by a factor. We'll put that up here. Var factor is equal to, mm, I don't know, we can try uh, 0.1 or something like that. For now, we may have to adjust that. And so we'll multiply that by the factor, and that will make that a bit smaller. And now here's the y. The y will be the same thing. Except it would be the Y for those guys. Okay, now let's see where does that end. That's that one, that's this one, and there it is ending. Our second parameter for the apply force is where are we wanting to apply, like where on the mid body do we actually want to push this thing? And so usually that would be the center, and there's a handy way to get the center. Mid body. Uh, dot get world center like so and that's a method and we'll try that I wish it told me I had an extra oh whoa so do we see that well so what happened there is the force is being uh, heading towards it. it it goes past it or actually knocks it it looks like boink it's like a pool a pool shot kind of it knocks it and then comes back okay so uh, that's great. Now let's just copy this one. Copy. And we'll make it apply the other way as well. So also to the mid body, but this time we won't go to the drag body, but rather the, the other one. What was the other one called again? The anchor body. So anchor body. Anchor body. And uh, let's see what happens. Refresh. Now it seems to just stay still. Cool. Whoa! So that force is trying to balance it, and that middle ball is, is uh, sort of working its way in between those two things and causing that line to wiggle. Uh, you see what I mean by skipping rope if there, if there were... <laughs> It's almost a skipping rope now. Uh, gravity would make this droop. It would pull down on that middle one and sort of make it droop as we were going. All right, cool, but it's a bit wobbly, isn't it? So what we need to do is slow down the linear damping, the linear damping of that middle one. 
So that's up here. When we make that middle one, here's the mid body. When we make the circle, this is the radius, radius, colon 10, and then the linear damping, which is a, a long way somewhere in the parameter list, but we don't have to worry about it. Set it to two. Let's just uh, see what happens if we really bring that up. Yeah, it's getting there. So it, it just really kind of matters how much you want it to uh, wiggle around. What do you think? And the next thing is we want to sort of get rid of these dots so that we only see the wiggling line. You may be able to tell a bit more. I think that, let's try 1.5. 1, 1. Exploring. All right. Good. Okay, and uh, let's, oh yeah, there's that throwing problem though. We just threw that away and I, I can't get it now. So to stop the throwing from happening when we uh, drop the circle, we will want to apply an event so that we set the, the linear velocity probably, I, I think is what it's called. In physics, we're dragging the body, but actually we'll, we'll put the event capture on the, the Zim circle here. So drag dot on and press up, call this function. And now what we'll do is we'll say drag body dot set linear velocity. There's probably a few ways we could do this, but if we just basically say set the linear velocity to zero, then that will stop it from moving when we press up on the thing. So uh, that requires a new b2 vec two and zero comma zero, which I think is just an object with an X and a Y of zero and zero. Okay, now let's see that's here in the event. And semicolon, let's see if that helps us refresh. Now I throw it, oh yeah. That just stopped right away. So the linear velocity when we pressed up on our circle, stopped. Okay, now we can hide these things if we want. You might want to keep that last one, but we no longer need to map the anchor. So I'll just comment those out and we no longer need to map the mid. And let's see. Looks like, so now we have a line that's wiggly. Whoop. Cool, huh? And if you're interested in how in seeing this code, then you can go uh, zimjs.com slash explore slash line.html. And you can then view the source. To view the source, control U or right click on the side there and say view page source. It does go through the source to make the various wiggles, which were some experiments to see how that worked. But then uh, I think this is probably your better solution. So here we've, to make it wiggle even more, you see how that, that wiggles a bit more? We just made the uh, factor here, probably 0 0.05 or something. So that means the force is acting less, which means that as, as the force goes one way, it takes sort of longer to come back and forth and, and uh, the wiggle, uh, well, it sort of, I, I guess, goes farther. <laughs> the wiggle's bigger. Um, but in doing so, you might want to drop our, our other factor. Where was the other factor that we were working with? It was, this is one factor. Oh, the damping up here. So this linear damping may have been, uh, been reduced so that it can slide farther because the force is less. So, so it's really a balance between this val value for the linear damping and this value for how much force you're using. And that has been a Zim Explore. Here with Dr. Abstract. 
Um, so that's neat. It just shows, once again, that you can use physics to make things look really cool. And, and actually, I find that making the physics is even easier than uh, not using physics, in this case, than, than hard coding the Zim wiggle and stuff like that. We had to go through a lot of hoops to do the wiggle. Physics, we had to go through a few hoops, but I think you see that it gives a more realistic result. So have a great day or night. Of course, we could be at night. I often code at night in amongst the stars.